I'm gonna make this video about how to process emotion. This is honestly something I'm just in the beginning stages of focusing on and getting better at. And it's really fascinating how little this is talked about or demonstrated in our world, in anybody's world for the most part. And it's this thing that I think people take for granted that they just know how to do or are doing. I know that before, I don't know, six months ago, I would think processing my emotion was definitely something that I did. But if I were to try to instruct somebody on how to do it, I don't know what I would have said. Or if somebody asked me how I did it, I probably would have said, that I just took time, took some downtime. Yeah, mentally processed. I think I took, I, I think I took the term mostly to mean mentally processing something. And you know, when I mentally process something, I do always feel like I'm having feelings and like I feel those feelings, but do I necessarily process those feelings? I don't know. I think in the past it was about, for me, my understanding of processing emotion was sort of coming to some sort of insight that could change my perspective or give me something new to think about coming to some sort of conclusion you know the thinking part was related to trying to feel my instincts trying to feel my gut my guides whatever you want to call it but i would definitely always approach that through my brain i didn't always feel like in control of the process or the outcome at all and it's been oh Look at this cool bridge. I might have said this already, but it's a little spooky being out here alone because I just haven't been in wildlife where there's actual wildlife in a long time by myself, isolated. Anyway, so processing emotion. Um, you know, as guys, as trans guys, there's this whole other component to this too because of our experience of going on testosterone maybe i'll get into that later but i want to talk about just what i'm learning about processing emotion which is for one the entire exercise is about feeling your feelings and there is a process to processing your emotions it is feeling the feeling in your body taking the time to feel the feeling naming the feeling and this can sound stupid but it's true that a lot of us just sort of check in with ourselves and we think like how are we feeling right now and we'll be like oh, i feel good or i feel okay or i feel kind of crappy we use these very general terms or for identifying our feelings but it's actually important to get much more specific and to help people do this there are lists you can download online of emotions just words for emotions so that you can so that you can get more nuanced you know are you like, like, like there's a whole bunch of different types of anger, you know? Are you f having like frustrated anger? Are you having violent anger? Are you having annoyed anger? Are you just having irritation? You know, so getting more specific with the type of emotion that you're feeling is going to help you process it more effectively. So you want to get in tune with what your body's feeling and you want to ask yourself like, how does it feel in my body? You want to try to get out of your head. You want to say, how does it feel in my body? Where do I feel it in my body? So an example might be like, I feel sad and frustrated. I feel it in my chest. I feel it in my face. I feel it in my shoulders, my jaw, and a little bit in my stomach. And then you want to try to get as specific as you can and say how do you feel in those sections right so like maybe your face feels kind of hot you know your shoulders feel like tensed your neck feels tensed your jaw feels clenched tight your chest feels tense a lot of tension you know are you taking shallow breaths throughout the day uh, throughout this period you know just checking in and trying to get as specific as you can about describing the feelings and how those feelings are manifesting in your body in those ways so how does my body feel you know you can do a body scan and you know for the longest time i would try to do meditations and i noticed that so many guided meditations online and podcasts and whatever it was just this process of body scanning but i didn't understand really why they were doing it and i found it really boring because it would just be like okay now think about the top of your head and 
try to feel it from the inside out and you know now you're trying to think about your how do your shoulders feel try to feel them from the inside and i would just i'd be so fucking bored i would just stop the practice but those meditations didn't give the context needed to understand what they were trying to accomplish but now that i'm learning this stuff about processing emotion i think back to those meditations and i'm like oh it's because that they were just trying to guide you into identifying how does your body feel because your body can feel very different in each different area of your body obviously and that can relate to different emotions and you know not to go off on a tangent but like this also you know connects to like ancient chinese medicine not that i'm an expert on that and by any regard but you know i've seen enough to know that you know we've got all these different pressure points all over our bodies that relate to different feelings and different organs and all that sort of stuff right so bottom line everything's connected and when we're just living in our heads and kind of shutting off that connection to our body and the sort of intelligence that's in our body we're missing like so much of the conversation of what's going on inside of us so we've talked about these first couple of steps of body scanning identifying your emotion identifying how that emotion is feeling in your body because ultimately emotion is just vibration and so we're trying to see like where is that emotion vibrating in our body how is it manifesting and then once we've identified it and called it out and acknowledged it then you just want to like try to to breathe into it and allow the feeling to be there because we're so trained to just resist those feelings. I mean, whether we're consciously resisting or not, we have to be taught to process emotion in the first place because we're just inherently resisting. We're inherently resisting the self-awareness and the connection with our body and, and what it feels and, and what that is about. It's just, and I think this is where I struggled and probably where tons of people struggle, is that in the past, before I understood this, I would try to allow, I would, you know, I'd, I'd feel all kinds of different ways, even happy things. And I would try to just be like, okay, just allow that feeling. But it's like, it's kind of hard and impossible to allow it to fully be there and pass through you when you haven't acknowledged it properly, when you haven't named it properly, when you can't even identify exactly what it is or where it lives or how it's manifesting in your body. So once you've done that, that's when you can allow the feeling much more effectively. Then you can breathe into it. And I think, you know, if you really practice this, you'll notice that the feeling really does come much more effectively at this stage and it's been shocking to me honestly i've been doing this with the help of life coaches uh, i'm in this program called scholars through the life coach school and you get in that program you get a 20 minute life coaching session uh, with different life coaches you know it wasn't until like a month or so ago that i found out that you can just jump on one of those sessions and say i just want to process an emotion going a little into my story right now i came to san francisco for glansplasty and it's brought up a lot of grief about the relationship with my fiance that i ended a few months ago basically a week after getting home from stage one and i'll make another video about this but i didn't expect it but coming on this trip triggered a lot of grief and sadness because once I was out of glansplasty and the two-day recovery and I was just free to kind of just explore San Francisco and the various surrounding areas like a real vacation, yeah, it brought up a lot of sadness and grief because this is the kind of vacation my ex would have loved and we vacationed really well together. It's just been really hard not to miss her and it's sort of forced me to keep reminding myself why we're not together. And so all in all, it's been bringing up a lot of grief and then I've been, it's like double layered for me. So when I feel sad or I feel anything negative really, like I don't want to feel it. And so it's like, I'm sad about the thing I'm sad about. And then I'm sad that I'm feeling sad because I just want to feel good. I just want to feel good all the time. And when I feel good, I'm so happy that I feel good. And so all of this inherently comes with a resistance towards feeling bad, like a, an active, like I don't want to feel bad and I want to push away things that make me feel bad. And while I don't push them away as actively as probably some people, I'm very aware 
that I don't want to feel bad. I was also feeling sad like my trip is getting ruined because I'm just thinking and feeling these things and I don't want to think and feel them and I wasn't thinking and feel th feeling them this much, you know, back home, you know, in, in recent days and weeks and why am I feeling it now even though I cognitively understood it because I just explained it to you. It was like just annoying me and making me really sad on a lot of levels and you know i i would feel the grief and the sadness sort of well up and i would feel like it was like right at the surface you know like it just wants to come out you know through tears or whatever i even let myself like scream in my rental car one day it wasn't enough and the tears just they just don't come easily a lot of the time you know it dawned on me finally you know what book a life coach session so I did, it completely shifted. So I didn't even ask her to process emotion with me because I'm still too new into this, but I just kind of told her what was going on and what was coming up and she just knew to like go into that. And so once she started asking me the questions, then I was reminded like, oh yeah, I've heard the podcasts about this. And so we went through it. We went through the the act, the, the practice of, of processing the emotion together. And I did cry on the life coach session, you know, not a lot, but you know, it at least came out, but I did feel the shift. like. It was amazing and I have felt so much more grounded and so much better since the session and then on the drive here I was listening to a podcast you know so when you're in the when you're in the program you get access to a private podcast and so I've tended to just listen to the private podcast all the time now but I went back and I was like, you know, I haven't listened to the public podcast in a while. And I was so fucking happy I went back and checked it out today because she has this amazing episode where it's like six male life coaches talking about men feeling their feelings, what that process was like for them and how they work with their clients. Because the overwhelming majority, you know, I would guess probably 95, 98% of the life coaches in her program are women. And uh, they say that more and more men are joining, but it's just very female dominated. And it's possible that she used to just gear all her marketing towards women. I don't know. But uh, anyway, we know that, you know, there's a lot of shit when it comes to men and emotions and all of that and you know i think it's slowly shifting but it's gonna you know it's a process so once you allow your those feelings to show up you know you gotta just make make peace make make space for them give it as much time as you can you know if you and as much time as you feel like you need i mean maybe you feel like you only need to really feel it for five minutes maybe you feel like you need to feel it for an hour like you know maybe you feel like you need to feel it for an hour but you only have 10 minutes and you know but hey 10 minutes is better than nothing and then you can come back to it you know it doesn't all have to happen perfectly in one session just allow it to show up because that's the process that's going to allow it to pass through you and that's where you get to the other side and once you get better at this then the next phase which i'm very excited to get to is that you start being able to control your emotions which maybe doesn't sound right but let me explain they talk about for one you get better at being an observer of your emotions which is kind of the first step of being less reactive to your emotions and from there well i want to address i think a common misconception too about feeling your feelings and processing your emotions is that a lot of people think it's about reacting to your emotions like processing or feeling your feelings means reacting to them but it does not mean that actually it just means being aware allowing and then being in control and when I say in control it doesn't mean like okay now I'm in control so I can repress it effectively like obviously not that that's counterintuitive to everything we just talked about but the power to then decide so that you're not a slave to those reactions and I've struggled with this in a specific way where I have I would not say I'm somebody who has repressed my emotions I would say I've been very comfortable feeling them and allowing for them but in that i have felt confused a lot about like well what do i do with it like it feels like there's something i need to do and that's where i've been fucked up honestly because i don't want to repress that doesn't feel right and i don't want to do nothing out of some sort of perception of shame or self-judgment but i do feel like i have to do something like I, I like i don't want to ignore it and i haven't fucking known what to do a lot of the time so a lot of the times i just think like well i'm just gonna allow myself 
to do the most, what I think is, is the best reaction I can think of. And sometimes that's, you know, texting my partner something that maybe I shouldn't text, even though I'm, I'm trying to go about it in the best way that I know how. Maybe it's just, it, it shouldn't be put on to somebody else, right? Or, or offered to somebody else. Um, you know, maybe it's responding to an email, maybe, you know, whatever it is, I have allowed myself these very calculated reactions because I'm not somebody who has felt like I'm ever out of control of myself. So that makes it more confusing too. It's like I am making the decision to have this reaction, but at the same time, I feel like I have to have some kind of reaction because I don't know how else to let the feeling go somewhere else, or shift, change, evolve. But once we get better at processing and then observing our feelings, we can be much more in control of our reaction to the feelings and i guess the the crescendo is that it's not just about being better at choosing reactions it's just that we've got this tool in our pocket now of how to process and get the emotion to the other side without having to have a reaction and that's that's the power right there that's the key that i was missing was like i didn't know how to get the react the, the emotion to the other side so when you know that you can do that and you can do that at any time about any feeling that you're having whatsoever, then you're free because then you don't have to be afraid of any emotion coming up ever because you know that you know how to deal with it and you know that you know how to be okay. Then from that place of freedom and power, self-empowerment, whatever, control, whatever you want to call it, you can then pick and choose like, is this an emotion that I'm going to react to or is this an emotion I'm just going to simply process on my own? own now or later. So I'll drop a link to this amazing podcast that, you know, I'm basically just putting in my own words right now, honestly, but I just feel very inspired by the whole topic because of my experience this week. And also, you know, I have had some of these like emotional processing sessions in recent weeks and months. And, you know, I'm so busy and, and we all do this, right? We're like, we learn something really profound and maybe we, you know, we touch it with our own lives. We dabble with it here or there. And then we just get busy in this just like, and then we're just like back in the mess of life. And it's kind of like, you know, we need, several reminders and several touch points of like oh yeah go back and practice this thing go back and do this like when i did that it was really helpful one more quick thing on the topic of feeling your feelings is i want to talk about it quickly as a trans guy as i descend this very <laughs> technical and steep decline uh, because I'm crazy. So the day is getting on, more and more people are showing up on the trail. If you're like me, you noticed a very big shift in your feelings and how they showed up for you when you started tea. I definitely got angry faster. Faster. I definitely felt frustration, irritation, all those kind of like negative low vibe emotions. Faster, hotter, stronger. You know, did it did I feel them in a way that made me feel out of control of them? No. Did I feel them in a way that made me like, you know, become violent? No. But I definitely felt them stronger, hotter, faster. And at the same time, I felt them in a way, I guess because, probably, probably because I was feeling them stronger, hotter, faster. They were more shrouded, more sort of clumped together as just anger, irritation, annoyance, less nuance, and just harder to sit with. So, you know, I want to acknowledge that I think as trans guys, you know, it's valuable that we have the before experience, you know, for a lot of things. I mean, I know we'd all, tr most of us would trade it in in a heartbeat to just be born cis, but regardless, we got to look to our strengths of our experience. So, you know, we have this interesting before and after effect that we can refer to, but in either case, bottom line, testosterone changes things like it just does and it doesn't make us less emotional by any means but it does shift the way the emotions can play with our chemistry and show up for us how we react all that sort of stuff and i'm sure most if not all of you have felt that to some degree i know there's a lot of non-binary people as well that may not be on t or maybe on very low doses and for you the experience may be different but you know for the rest of us, this is a common thing that we all kind of know about. And I would also say beyond the physiology, the biology of tea running through our system and what that does, I think for myself, those negative feelings also feel more alive and more real a lot of the times because 
I'm just mad about being trans sometimes. And I'm mad about all of the complication and difficulty and sometimes just flat out unfairness that it comes with, even though at the same time, I'm so grateful for the ability to transition in my life because I really struggle to imagine my life progressing, you know, into my 40s without being able to transition and just how increasingly uncomfortable that would have become. So I think that negative stuff probably would have been there either way. And that's kind of the rub, right? Is like, it's just the situation, the cards were dealt and we have to try to make the best of them. But I think because of our trans experience, I don't want to say it's more important that we do this feeling work. I think it's equally important for everybody, but there's that extra piece that, I don't know, that just makes this so important. So I just want to leave that with you guys and hopefully serve as like another touch point for you to revisit this topic. Go feel your feelings, guys. Process your feelings. Learn about this shit. It's really cool.